Hey, it's Troy, and if you've watched me at all, you know that I'm a fan of Waterman pens. And one of the things I, that was on my wish list for Waterman was a Waterman Commando. I've actually tried getting a Commando previously, and this is a 1940 Waterman Commando. It's got the Waterman name on it right there, made in USA. It is a lever filler. I bought this one being restored, and I know that my fingerprints and smudges are all over it now, but actually, he did a fairly decent job. You can see a lot of shine and luster on that pen. Probably did a better job than I'd be able to do on, myself, on my own. I'll find out soon enough because I ordered another one that I know needs restoration. Uh, so other than changing out an ink, ink sack, we'll see how well uh, it looks. So I bought one that was restored for me to have that I know works. And I bought one that I eventually will get. Uh, no hurry on it, but it just hadn't arrived yet for me to get. Because I liked it enough to uh, have two of them. And the other one will give me a project to do. So, 1940 Waterman. I've got a growing family of Waterman pens. I've never been a big fan of the lever filling system with an ink bladder on the inside, quite honestly. But, um, you know, it is it is what it is. Because if you want an older Waterman, that's pretty much what you're going to get. But uh, a, a pen that's in great condition from 1940, I figured uh, let's give it a shot and I'll take the risk on it. So what else is there to tell you? I mean, it's got a large 14 karat nib on it. Um, it does say Waterman's Ideal on the nib. So let me show you what that looks like. It's just a, an ordinary, everyday, nothing special Waterman's nib. Um, you know, the section is black. Of course, you got the screws for the uh, screw-on cap. And it's, a, it's not an oversized pen. I'd, I'd call this like a medium to a medium large pen. It's not humongous. Um, although there are some commandos that I've seen pictures of that I don't know if the pictures just made them look bigger than they really were. But, um, you know, I, I one of the things that I don't like about it is you've got threads on here that depending upon where you start twisting will determine where that lever ends up in alignment with the cap. So that's the one thing about it that I don't like so far um, is um, it doesn't have a perfect alignment. And it's just one of those visual OCD things that bothers me. I, would, I, I like to have my, my, uh, my clip lined up perfectly <laughs> with the lever. It just doesn't happen on this pen. Uh, but it's one of those simple yet elegant. Black with gold trim to me uh, is simple yet elegant. Mont Blanc has built a reputation on having simple yet elegant pens. I've got a lot of black with gold trim pens and they just look sharp. This is no exception. You've got those tiny two little pinstripes there on the cap. On the finial, you figure that's just like a little, uh, just a little cap, uh, a gold colored cap. Nothing special um, at the end of the barrel. All this is just a rounded tapered end. So, you know, that pen tapers down towards the end here. The cap tapers upwards towards the, the full uh, diameter there. And these are readily available. Uh, you can probably find these uh, with uh, people who deal with vintage pens. You can also find them on eBay. Um, and uh, like I said, I've lost some auctions on these previously. And I just went ahead I broke down I may I don't think I overpaid for it because I know what I've seen them go for but I paid a little more than I really wanted to um, believe me the one that I'm gonna get that I'm going to restore myself I paid nowhere near what I paid for one that was restored I figured I'd take the chance uh, just because I felt like it so capping the pen because it's not a very heavy pen at all this particular pen is 0.55 ounces total and that's 16 grams so it's not very heavy at all. You know, it's got that plastic or resin, uh, I, well, I believe it's a, a resin for its barrel and its cap. And it's got a very flexible nib, and I'll tell you more about that during the writing sample. So overall, you know, like I said, I'm a Waterman guy. I don't know why, it's just 
Waterman was one of the first pens that I owned that I really liked. And just about every Waterman I've touched, save one, there's only one so far, I went, eh. Um, and actually make that two only because I've got one I haven't been able to finish restoring yet because uh, it's just a touch beyond my capability thus far. But I'm going to get there and I'm going to get it writing. So I've, uh, I think the only one I've got that I didn't like so far so much was the Waterman Crusader. I don't like the way it handled, so um, I probably just need to spend break down, spend some more time with it. And I've got another one that I don't even know what model it is that I got to eventually find out. So, anyway, this one is one I was actually excited about getting, and was on literally on my wish list for a while. So the 1940 Waterman Commando, and it's an elegant pen that I would feel comfortable being able to bring with me to any business meeting that I would have. I would feel comfortable carrying it with me. The ink capacity didn't seem too bad. It writes okay. You got to keep in mind on this one, it's kind of a flexi nib. So the flexible nibs write just a little bit different, but this is one of the better flex nibs that I've got in my collection. Just the other day, I was writing with a flex nib in old Wartman uh, German pen, and it did fairly well. This one, I think. I like better than the Wartman that I've got in terms of uh, how it writes, in terms of the amount of variation in lines that you can get with this one. And here's the, uh, the writing portion of it to show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, here is my Waterman Commando. It has been restored, like I had already talked about. And it's an old lever filler. And it's got the 14 karat nib on it. And it is fairly flexy, so let me show you a little bit. You see how there's some flex in that nib? Well, let's look at the Waterman Commando from 1940, the 14 karat nib with some flex to it. it um, it's a little on the fine side. then um, I kind of prefer, but it still actually writes fairly well. It's not quite smooth. Nah, not really. It's just a little bit toothy. So I may still be able to smooth that out just a little bit if I wanted to, but it's not objectionable. It's, it's not something that's uh, tremendously bothersome. I've actually got some flexi pens uh, or flexible nibs, and those flex nibs all tend to be fairly similar in the amount of feedback that you get. You can probably hear the feedback. All right. So, oh, by the way, the ink that I'm using, Lamy Pacific Blue. Oh, let's look at some reverse writing. How does that do? That gives you a very extra fine line there. Um, you can get a good amount of variation on this because you've got that flexi nib. Look at that. Look at that. This is one of the flexier or nicer variations I've seen in some of my flex pens. Enough so that it really feathers on this particular paper. This is not top quality paper. It just happens to be a pad that I had that I don't really use much. I've had this pad for years and I figured this would be a good thing to use it on just because I tend to write on normal everyday ordinary notepads rather than put everything onto high quality paper and you know because I live in the real world uh, but uh, so anyway this is uh, not a bad pen at all um, I may I don't know I, I don't think I'm gonna bother smoothing it out because it's not objectionable even though you hear that feedback it keeps up with me just fine uh, it's not too toothy, just a hair, just an itty bitty little bit, and it is a vintage pen. I mean, it's a 1940 pen, so what do you expect? So let's see how it does when I go to write fast. I mean, it keeps up with me just fine when I do a very scribble signature, and I don't do my signatures that scribbly and that fast anyway, but it definitely keeps up. So that is the new, uh, new to me, or I've had it for you know just a little bit. Uh, but my Waterman Commando 1940 lever filler.